Yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, Body Logics, The Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have it, to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at, uh, at Living Sisu and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athlete's determination, the resiliency, everything to what me, made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, former professional hockey goaltender and former Los Angeles Kings goaltending development coach, Dustin Emo. Dustin <laughs> played one season in the, in the ECHL and the IHL, the old International Hockey League, for more than a decade, and then playing more than a decade overseas, playing professionally in Japan, in a few world championship games for Team Japan, along with being part of Japan's national team in the 1998 Olympic Games in Japan. So Dusty played his junior hockey days in the BCJHL in the Western Hockey League before turning pro. So this is going to be a really fun episode. So Dusty, welcome to the show. Hey man, how are you doing? I'm I'm doing good. Just got done with a with a little run. So just and just got back enjoying this uh, nice little afternoon chat with you. How about you? Uh, well, it's still early yet, so I'm just uh, having a coffee and uh, got ready for your, your little podcast here. So all is good. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, thanks again for being able to be willing to come on because it's I know we just got I just emailed you maybe like four days ago. and We're we're on this episode right now. So it's a quick turnaround, but but I love it. Yeah, no worries, man. Anytime. Yeah. So to start things off, like what got you into the game of hockey like when did you start playing like what made you choose like the the path to become a goaltender because that's uh because mm -hmm. you're stopping pucks with that are getting shot 90 90 miles per hour and so like what how crazy do you have to be to do that <laughs> i think when when you're little and a canadian kid being raised just around hockey i, I think it's just a natural thing to do as far as being a hockey player. Now, be more specific regarding goaltending. Uh, I think uh, I tell many people that I can't remember everything about my childhood, but I do remember just loving the way goalies looked and the way they uh, had this persona about them, kind of like superheroes and the masks were really cool. and. Back then, each goalie kind of had their own identity, and I just really gravitated towards that because it seemed like a, a really special position. And, you know, that, that's as far as I can remember, uh, the gravitation towards being a goalie. Um, but as far as hockey in general, it's just I think kind of we're all brought up in that uh, environment, and that kind of is what leads you down that path. Yeah, because you're uh you're from Canada, so it's probably so hockey's obviously the hot spot there. So yeah. you just grow right into it and you're probably yeah. probably skating before before you can even walk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, but it, like the goaltending side of it, like 
it's all you customize your gear. Like I think that's what stands out to pretty much every goal, everyone that wants to be a goalie or is a goalie is just uh, the customization of the gear, like the pads, the mask, like you said. So like, what were some of like your, what was your favorite pad that you wore all time so far? Um, well that, Hey, just so you know, that's a, that's a first question. I have you, you know, I get a lot of the same questions, which is cool. Don't ever think yeah. that getting the same question, you know, hey, I'm it, glad to be new. Yeah, no, but that's a different one. Uh, well, I wore for so many years, I wore Vaughn. So, uh, I'm a, a Vaughn guy, uh, through and through, but, uh, and I wore quite the same stuff for, like, I was big and back in the day when my idols and stuff, they kind of had the same mask yeah. and they wore the same mask through their whole career. So that was kind of their identity. And it's kind of similar to the gear. They would switch up a little bit, but quite often you kind of had the same look. And I wore the same look for, geez, I, I, a long time. And every so often I might switch a little bit, but it was just all like I was on a team with red and black for so many years. And I just wore all red pads, no white with just black trim. And uh, just simple uh no designs no nothing and then i when i switched to a team with red and blue like montreal i just changed the black to 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 blue and that was it and uh you know it, i was i like the simplicity like that but the um the pad in, i guess you'd say the the vaughn i forget what they were even called back then um legacy maybe uh that those are my favorite yeah, it's sometimes simple is simple is better, especially like when you want, especially because like the red and uh, or the blue and what then like the other colors that you wore, like it's just bold. And like you'll just it's bold, it's simple, and like it gets straight to the point. Like you're you're looking good out there. So that's if you if you give up a few goals, at least you're looking good doing it. <laughs> yeah, I always tell the guys that. Uh, being uh feeling good about yourself and looking good as uh, uh crazy as it sounds is actually a big deal because if you feel good inside it definitely can help you um so i always tell the guys that make sure you you like what you're wearing and feel good about it yeah absolutely that's what i that's what i do when i go pick out gear i do whatever i can to look good feel good and if, if you look good and you play and you feel good you're gonna play good like that's <laughs> that's the memo that everyone everyone seems to seems to be going towards nowadays well they definitely have a lot of options now back when i was a kid there wasn't uh they didn't even have colored gear when i was younger and then uh it wasn't until later on into my junior and stuff that uh, I started to see that stuff. But um, now you can pretty much print anything you want on these pads. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the technology has come uh, a long way. And like, just like you said, like you could print like the graphics on the pads, like mm -hmm. they have like graphic shops for all that. And like, just go to the company that you're buying from Vaughn, Brian, Bauer, CCM, wherever. And like, they'll go to like a graphic company and, print out those graphics and some of the graphics that come out now are like are super legit and super cool especially like when you get uh linus olmark like he has some really nice graphics and like you could go down a whole list of guys that have great graphics right now mm -hmm. yeah no there's some pretty neat looking pads for sure yeah absolutely it's so like growing up like who are some of your like your inspirations to get into goaltending like you try to emulate your style out of or off of uh, well, my, my, uh, I guess there'd be sections when I was really little, I remember liking, uh, uh, Richard Broder from the Canucks he could, mainly cause I, I was young and, uh, I mean, I think they, in 81, I think they went on that run in the, into the final and they weren't even that great of a team, but he kind of got hot and, uh, that I, I remember watching that and liking him. But then when I became more knowledgeable and, and getting closer into junior and stuff, I, my my uh, idol and I who I like to look to is uh, grows Grant Fear. He, I really like Grant Fear, and uh, you know there are a ton of goalies out there that were really good, but he was the one that I kind of liked the most. 
Yeah, that those are that's those are some great goalies, especially uh Grant Fury. Like he's a he's a legendary icon, and like it's a great way to to style yourself out off of and just like look at him for inspiration, like and get inspired from from guys mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, and and I, I remember when I was getting into junior and stuff, uh, you know, and the pressures were getting uh, higher. I felt that when I would watch him do his interviews and stuff, he just seemed very aloof, like, you know, just went out there and played and, and just tried to win and he let in goals and it didn't seem to bother him. So I really, I, I admired that about him and uh, tried to kind of bring that into my game because I, I wasn't as easy going as he was for sure. Did it translate into your game after you learned learned about that for a little bit and like learned what he did to help calm yourself down, like not get so yeah. aggressive? Yeah, it took some time. You know, it took me longer than uh, maybe some others or like like himself naturally. But yeah. uh, especially when I got older and understood what I was involved in as an adult and into professional hockey, that I really needed to figure that part out. Uh, because if I wanted to maintain a career for a long time, you just had to have that kind of mentality. It just was hard to be up and down, up and down. And it was hard for me because I was very emotional. Uh, and when you have uh, an emotional inner being, it seems to be calm is not the natural thing. <laughs> so, yeah. so I really had to work on it, but it, eventually I came around. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, I'm, I was the same way. Like, I would get, like, so upset and, like, so angry about, like, giving up goals and all that. And, like, once you start thinking about, like, the goals you're giving up, like, you're going to get lit up even more. So that was something I had to learn and just, like, how to, like, calm yourself down, like, like that and just not get so mo emotional and just stay, like, even keel. Because if you keep thinking about it, like, I would think about, like, games in the past where I'd we'd lose games, like, 6-1, 7-1. And then you start thinking about it, what do you think is going to happen next? You're going to give up six or seven that game. And then I was like, why does this keep happening? And then like, once you keep your emotions in check and everything and don't be so aggressive and just stay that even keel and not think, not overthink or overcommit about anything. You just, that's when you see your, the best games out of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something that needs to be worked on. It doesn't come to most people naturally, yeah. especially in that position because there's so much uh, of a spotlight on you. Uh, even at in beer leagues, you know, it, it's the weirdest thing. You could be in a rank with nobody in the rank and you still feel this heat. It's the weirdest oh, yeah. thing. I don't know why it is. You could be as cool as a cucumber off the ice and as soon as you get there in the net, uh, the pressure seems to build up. And it takes some time to learn that. But it's it's doable. Everybody can do it, and you know that's now that is part of my job and <laughs> in teaching that and amongst other things. But it does take some time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I I hundred percent agree with you there. It's like, what would be like some tips you'd give younger kids about like going through youth hockey? Like you're supposed to have fun during youth hockey, and just like because that's why you're playing the playing the game of hockey is because you want you're having right. fun and just not getting so like emotional and worked up about stuff, especially at that younger age when you're just worrying about like developing the kids. Mm -hmm. It's tough lots of times because of outside things that are happening. Yeah. Um, if it was just a kid, you would feel pressure sometimes and whatnot, but you, you could generally figure it out uh, and it wouldn't mount too badly. But what happens is you have parents, you have coaches, you have uh, other parents, not just your own. Uh, and then the pressure kind of mounts and the kids can feel that, you know, getting in the car ride home and and hearing people, your parents uh, giving it to you for not putting in the good enough effort or, you know, the this was your one chance to make the A team and all this kind of stuff. But um, one thing I would say with the kids and I'd say with the pros too, is if you're having trouble, one one um, tool I used, and this is just one example, but I would um, use uh, perspective. 
generally uh, the word perspective and what I mean by that is I would use um, for example when my when my mother was sick and had cancer and, and then she passed away um, I would use that in a sense and look back at it and go you know that was that was real serious stuff and in my life and the rest of it kind of I built it builds a perspective yeah. and it really made me being on the ice at that moment letting in three goals in the first period where it would really mount and you're like geez I can't let any more goals if we're gonna have a chance to win you know that pressure right yeah. and I would just have that quick moment and I would think about something like that and realize it's not really such a big deal in in the grand scheme of things and I could still go out and play and I could go out and play hard, but it was like it it changed where the real pressure, what was really important. Like I didn't I don't want to downplay the importance of playing well and all that, yeah. but it just builds some perspective. And for kids, you could do it in a more simple way. But think about some other things other than just playing hockey, because it is a game, right? And uh, there are more important things in life than whether or not you're going to win or lose. And uh, sometimes that helps. Uh, it's just one way. Um, it's not the only way to combat <laughs> the, those uh, pressures. But uh, that's one way I, I usually uh, try to help guys with and just say build some perspective around what you're doing. Yeah, that's a that's a great tip. And like, I, I love how you said that, especially like since like I am goalie coach now and it's like my it's going to be my third week goalie coaching. So like just to know because like the kids do get agitated and all that. And like you just mm -hmm. got to think of like that perspective and just about like it's more than just a game. Like it's it's just a game. Like there's more to it than just playing like you have outside stuff going on and just you got to like realize that and just go back to that moment where you could get some perspective, like you said, and just see where, where it is and just calm your, calm your nerves down, calm yourself down and like, keep the, keep the pressure down a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So then throughout like, and then you go on to, after your youth hockey and everything, you find yourself on a path to junior hockey, which then leads you into the professional ranks. So like, what was it like going through the Western hockey league and just being able to, go through like that high, high end junior league and just go through the WHL? Well, looking back, I, I'm sure I, I had some fun. I, but at the time I wouldn't have told you that I was just very goal driven. Uh, I was a lot of the things that, you know, I tried to teach not to be as far as uh, perspective and, and, uh, and just balance in your life because I was very, very, very goal driven and uh, push, push, push <laughs> and uh, lots of pressure because I was ranked really high and uh, it just it I was just constantly going, going, going. And I really didn't uh, have a whole lot of, like I said, perspective, perspective on the whole thing. So uh, Ask, asking me that question now, I'll give you a di I'd give you a lot different answer, right? Because I look back yeah. and yeah, there were a lot of great stories and memories. But at the time, I was just trying to get through the junior so I could play pro and play in the NHL. That was it. And um, uh, I wish I could have smelled the roses a little bit better along a lot of the earlier part of my career. But it was definitely a, a a life changing experience. I learned a lot. Most of the, the lessons I didn't figure out till later uh, that they helped me. Uh, they help other people more than they help me actually. Now that I use them in my coaching and, and try to help uh, young uh, kids and adults um, to troubleshoot through some of these things before they actually mount into a, a uncontrollable problem. But uh, Junior was. Um, an experience for sure. You know, I did, uh, I left when I was 15. So I played a couple in the BC hockey HL and then four years in the Western league. So a lot of years, of <laughs> a lot of years of junior for sure. Uh, a lot of experience again from those, from those years and years and juniors, but like, what was it like leaving at 15 when you did and just getting on to that new journey of junior hockey? It was a different lifestyle than, than like right. youth and minor hockey. Yeah. Like I said, 
I was so focused and, and kind of had the blinders on, you know, the horse blinders to going forward. That I just uh, went to my first camp uh, kind of as a, an experience type thing. Yeah. Uh, no, my parents, nobody thought I was going to make it that year. And I did. And um, I just kind of, from that point on, it was like, just go, 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 go. Um, so it was definitely an experience. I think the, I, you know, I don't recommend going that young. I, I don't think you can anymore. I think 16 is the age, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it's you learn a lot uh, of, of things not to do and, <laughs> and whatnot. But uh, it definitely builds uh, human beings for sure. Sometimes a lot of kids don't make it through, you know, on the positive end of things. But if you can get through all of that, it, it definitely builds some life skills for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And like, it's such a change that, especially like when you do have that go, go, go mindset, like you, uh, like, it's just a grind. Like it, you just continue to grind every day. And like, it's like a different perspective than like some other people might have when playing juniors. Cause a lot of people are just out there to have fun. And then there's something, then you're obviously trying to get to the next level college pros, whatever it is. And just by grinding like you sometimes like miss like those moments and all that but like you get to that next level and it's like and like you uh you look back and you're like you look back at like some of the things that you could change during your junior junior days and like it's just it just comes all comes back to like the perspective like you've been saying yeah yeah for sure yeah so then you go on you go play from the bc to the to the whl so like what was that like ramping ramping up going from the bc to the western league especially since like western league's one of the higher leagues so like what mm -hmm. was like something that you had to learn from from that experience of just going from the bc to the dub well at the time i it wasn't a big deal to me as far as the, the jump or whatever because i was so young that everything was just happening really fast and i just was trying to make the decisions that would help me the best to get drafted and go to the NHL. That's all I care about. And um, the first couple of years after the first year, and then into the second year of the BC hockey league, everybody was, I was trying to decide on, on the best path. And, and I was getting led down the path of going to college. And I actually was kind of said I would, <laughs> And there were a couple schools that were talking with me, quite a few actually. And uh, I think it was Michigan State that I was going to go there, but I needed to graduate a year early. So I started taking classes. I took grade 11 and 12 in the same year. And uh, halfway through, I think, the New Westminster Bruins and the WHL, call, and the WHL called me. Uh, and they were kind of... Uh, recruiting me and trying to get me to go that route instead of school and my parents thought oh you got to go to school you got to go to school and I was kind of like okay I will but deep down I knew at that time I thought the WHL was the only route to the NHL yeah. so after the season was over I quit two of my classes and went home uh, uh, instead of staying in, in Kelowna where I was playing in the BC Hockey League and finishing the grade 12 that I needed to. And I said, I'm going to the WHL next year anyway, so I'm not <laughs> going to finish the school. So I finished the school the next year in the D WHL with New West and, and chose to go that route. And you know what? I, I, I don't want to say it's a regret because, like I said, life lessons, you learn a lot of good things. And um, my path that I ended up taking i ended up with a, a great uh life that i'm thankful for um but having said that having a an education i thought would have been nice after retirement um but you know you you make your choices and you learn and, and do the best with them and uh yeah the, the whole junior experience was interesting and the whl was no different to me than the bc hockey league it was just a another stepping stone <laughs> yeah absolutely it's like going through like what like juniors was back in the day versus like how you see it now like where are some of the things that you see 
going back from from when you played to now and like how the game has changed especially when it when it comes to playing junior hockey oh uh, well the game for one is just so much better like it, yeah. it's just the, the evolution of the game that's just uh you can't deny it you know you know playing like gretzky playing nowadays he it'd be tough you know He'd still be yeah. great, probably, because he's just so smart, such a smart hockey player. But the evolution of the, just the skill uh, and goalies, probably even more so. Like, I kind of laugh at some of the old old game footage. Uh, but, um, <laughs> lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, the, oh, sorry, you asked me about the the difference between the junior. Well. One huge difference, the biggest one aside from the skill is the physicality of it all. Yeah. Like when I played in the WHL, uh, especially my first team, the New Westminster Bruins, it was like not just line brawls, but like bench brawls. All the, you know, we had a number of them. And I remember that first season, I was a rookie and I can remember four of them. Like, and that, I mean, like, that's the whole team, right? Yeah. Not just the line brawl. Line brawls were, like, multiple in a game. It was, like, crazy. <laughs> I remember going on the road trips onto the East Coast to play, like, Medicine Hat, Saskatchewan, you know, the Saskatoon Blades and yeah. and Prince Albert Raiders. And we had uh, quite a few of the toughest guys in the league. And there were some real tough guys in the East as well. And they would be talking about the, the matchups coming up, you know, New West is going into town and all they talked about was who was going to fight who. It wasn't about who's going to win. It wasn't about the game, just who's going to fight. It was crazy. There were some un, unreal scraps and like some unreal legendary heavyweights that ended up being heavyweights in, in the NHL as well. That uh, it was uh, night after night. It was like, I was just looking back. Those were some, those were some of the best memories, actually, because I they were like legit NHL heavyweights. But I remember watching them and playing against them, and sitting there just watching them tune each other. <laughs> Those were some cool memories. Yeah, and like just like I remember, I like will pull up like YouTube videos, and like you'll see like the junior scraps, the the NHL, AHL, co scraps, especially like when back in the day when like there was a lot of like heavyweights, and like every game there'd be bench clears line brawls like and like you just look back and like now it's so much like skill based and like the game moves so much faster and like the fighting is kind of like getting like trimmed out of the game a little bit like there's still fights but like that especially at the nhl level they don't really they don't really like that anymore and just like it gets it just diminishes every single year but like you just see like the skill the fast the pace of the game how fast it goes like every single year it just keeps getting better and better and like you have to be like a couple steps ahead of the play if you want to succeed at, at that level at all yeah it's definitely evolved for sure uh, i would agree agree with you on that yeah absolutely so then after junior hockey you played in the east coast hockey league and you played 15 games in the international hockey league so like what was your time back in the echl like playing for Cincinnati Cyclones, the Erie Panthers, and then the Dane Bombers. I was, like I said, it was a lot going on at that time in my life. I, uh, my first year, um, I got married and my first year pro and, uh, had a kid, uh, right after that, like nine months later. <laughs> and, uh, and then also had adopted, a. um, my daughter and I, th I don't know if she would have been seven or eight and uh so i'm in my f through my first year pro and i have um, one baby and uh, another daughter and then 10 months later after that i had another one so um all of that was very much a blur um like I said, a lot of things happened through my life, you know, a lot of, you know, get forks in the roads and you kind of make decisions and you're, you're just flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And it, 
it quickly became a lot more than the decisions of what how what am I going to do for my career. It, it became a deci decisions about how am I going to support the family because I have responsibility now. So that's you know why it ended up being so short here. And um, when I was approached by uh, Dave King and the the Japanese Ice Hockey Federation about uh, going over there. Um, it kind of led me down that path. I had to make decisions very quick. And that's why I left North America so quick. Yeah, and like there's always going to be like forks in the road and roads and decisions you have to make, but you just got to make what's best for the family at that point. And just like, especially since you got a family support like that, that's your top priority instead of playing, instead of like, really focusing in on the game mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know i i had to learn a lot of things as i went and um made tons and tons of mistakes and bad decisions i made some good decisions um like i said uh, i have four kids now all adults and, and uh four grandkids and uh if i didn't <laughs> have these happen in my life these things that earlier in my life had happened I wouldn't have had all these great people in my life and um, you know stuff happens for a reason and uh, you know I'm thankful for that but yeah it, it was a, a definitely a, a short uh, path here in North America um, after after junior and into pro but you know that you know, your life lessons uh, lead you down different paths. And I believe everybody uh, has their own path that's kind of carved out for them. Um, and mine went <laughs> a different way. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one's path is the exact same. Like everyone has uh, that different path, like you said. And like, right. it's about the journey and not the destination. Like you went through juniors, you played in North America for a year, and then you went over to Japan. But I, I really want to know, like, since I never got to experience like the IHL because I'm 21 right now so I would be like one or zero or not even a year <laughs> old when especially like when my favorite team the Chicago Wolves like moved to from the IHL to the AHL like what was the old IHL like and playing in Fort Wayne because that's a when you look at it, it's a rich hockey history in Fort Wayne there oh yeah for sure yeah no it was a uh, back then the league was different it was um I don't, not a competitor, but it was at the same level as the American League, yeah. but in a different way. The American League at the time was more for their NHL prospects that were young. And the IHL seemed to gravit have a lot more um, influence with the older guys that had been around that were looking to build more uh, financial stability. So they were paying more guys more uh to kind of stay in the ihl yeah. as opposed to just bouncing back and forth from the nhl and there were some really really cool cities in the ihl back then uh so it was uh, a gravitational pull towards going to the ihl for the older guys right yeah. and um yeah it was a really interesting league a lot of real cool cities there are some not so great ones <laughs> but uh lots of fun in that league because a lot of the guys had been around um, when I, you know, for example, when I was in Fort Wayne, uh, player coach there was Bruce Boudreau oh. and, uh, the coach <laughs> yeah. that you now know, but he was a player coach and he had been around forever and it was, it's kind of like Reg Dunlop in, in uh, slap shot, <laughs> but, but it was, uh, really an interesting in initiation for me into, into the, the pro ranks because I played against some old guys that uh, had been around and uh, some barns that I never thought in a million years I would be in, but it was a, a lot of fun for sure. Yeah. So like, what were some of like your favorite cities that you love, love to travel to in the IHL and play in, uh, play in their barns? Well, there was a, the Western swing for sure was, was uh, really cool. Uh, wasn't cool for my career. I <laughs> did some pretty stupid things, but I, uh, they San Diego had the Gulls back then, the yeah. original team, and uh, there's Milwaukee, uh, da, 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 Kansas City, uh, 
Where else do they have teams? Oh, um, Phoenix, the Roadrunners. Oh. That, that was cool going there. And, um, yeah, the whole thing was uh, a lot of fun. There were some other cities, too, that were really neat. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, lot of fun. Too much fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Just got to have, have, have some fun. Well, uh, did you ever play in the Rosemont Horizon in uh, Chicago here? Uh, no, the, 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 the Wolves weren't in the league uh, or what, whatever they were after I left. And um, yeah. were they always the Wolves? Yeah, they're always yeah. the Wolves, yeah. Yeah, no, they weren't in the league when I was in the league. They had uh, yeah. they had some interesting cities too. I'd tell you about the good ones, but there are also some really <laughs> interesting ones like Kalamazoo and, and Muskegon and, <laughs> and whatnot. You you go on and on about those, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, that that's unreal, especially like going through like everything in the old IHL and like just seeing like the guys go around because like the guys that go around have like the best stories because like they played forever and like go go to a lot of places. So like you know they have like they have the great stories that that they tell every single year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I have some really good stories. Met some really good friends along the way but uh yeah that was an interesting time for me because you know i was really going through a lot as far as where i was and where i was supposed yeah. to be and then getting married so young and everything but um definitely a lot of life lessons around that time for me <laughs> yeah absolutely but then after that year in north america you went over to japan where you played over a decade over there so like what was your experience going over to Japan and then playing for playing for the teams you did over in Japan? You know, that that changed my life around for sure. Um, as far as finding um, a purpose and and uh, and the love for the love of the game again, and and I started to learn about uh, navigating myself a little better. You know, I I, I will say this: I still was a heavy, heavy, uh, partier and player. Like I played hard party hard. That was, you know, that was the great model. We always kind of tried to live by and, and I, I definitely followed that <laughs> to a T for too, too long. But, uh, as far as figuring out my love for the game again, and, uh, and actually my game just took off and that the real me kind of started to come out again. Uh, once I went to Japan, but most importantly, it was about finding uh, myself and um, also my heritage and, and all of that stuff was really cool. And I'm even more thankful now, you know, after I look back at it and being clean and sober too helps <laughs> looking back at things. <laughs> Yeah, and like you talk about like heritage and like so like how important was it to go over to Japan? Like you said, it was like where you really found like you got to experience like your heritage in Japan and just like experience everything you did and like learn for learn for yourself about Japan and yours and mm -hmm. as well as yourself. Yeah, no, it was really really a a great experience, and I'm super thankful that that opportunity arose and that I took that that opportunity and didn't you know, selfishly, uh, because I, I still believed I could have played in the NHL kind of thing. Uh, I, I did the right thing for myself and my family. And, uh, and I'm thankful for that because, you know, I, I ended up keeping a 15 year career as opposed to, uh, you know, playing a few years and then, and then packing it in, in North America or something, you never know what would have happened. Who knows, you know, I might've turned it around, but, uh, I'm glad I did what I did for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's all. That's awesome. That you got to experience that and go back to Japan. So like what, when you first got there, like what was like the culture shock, like going from North America over here to Japan? No, oh, man, there, there's just too many things. <laughs> there's, it's a different world over there. Uh, it, I haven't been there in, in so many years, but, uh, back then it was, it was literally another world and it was even more crazy because right from the beginning I was taking kids over, you know, I had already had three kids 
uh, when we went over there and um, doing that in, in, a, in a country where you don't speak the language, everything's in, in Japanese, like driving's on the other side, you drive steering wheels on the other side. Uh, it, it literally, there's a bajillion things that you daily would come up against and realize what have we got, what have we gotten ourselves into? But looking back, it was just such a great learning experience for myself, for my kids, my wife. A uh, lot at the time, you know, it was a lot of heartache and, and, and troubleshooting our way through things. But in the grand yeah. scheme of things, it was a great thing for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you just got to, got to learn everything, like from a new language, driving on the other side of the road. <laughs> and did you, uh, did you find yourself trying to go on the other side instead of like the correct side in Japan? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I felt like it, it was tough <laughs> at first. You get a, you get a, whole, uh, a hang of it easily though. Uh, it doesn't take too, too long, but at the beginning, especially cause of the condensed population, It'd be one thing if you're doing that on learning on the wrong side of the road with the steering wheel on the wrong side in Grand Prairie or yeah. in anywhere in, in North America. You know, the city is just it's not the same as when you're in Tokyo. It was insane. It was insane. Very intimidating because you, you, you got a million people, a million pedestrians, bicycles, motorcycles, mopeds, cars. It's a gong show. Wow, that's a that's a lot going on there. But hey, you get yeah. the you get the hang of everything. Like it's a whole new world. You gain yeah. a lot of valuable experiences. You go go to Japan for your heritage, and you you yeah. learn a lot, and you like you end up having the time of your life there. Yeah, no, it really was. It was uh, something I'm really thankful for. Made a lot of good friends, and and uh, learned a lot about my heritage and my family. So it was truly a blessing for sure. Yeah, so then in 1998, you get the chance to represent Japan at the Olympic stage in Japan. So what was your experience playing in the Olympics? And you actually got into three games, so that must have been pretty cool as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. It was uh, a great uh, experience for sure. Um, this is the whole reason why, you know, I got l lured to go is the, the whole point was to bring the Japanese Canadians that were playing pro and try to get their citizenships playing the pro league. So I went in 93, 94, I can't remember, but uh, yeah. played a few years and then finally got my citizenship and then played. Uh, I think six of us ended up playing on the team. And um, yeah, no, it was a great experience. It was, uh, it happened really quickly. Everyone um, thinks that it was, pro should be my biggest experience or, or best on the top it was it wasn't because there were so many other things in my life that were a lot more important uh but it definitely was uh, something i'm thankful for no doubt yeah so you go through like the olympics and like you look every step you every step of the way you learn something like and like you get to the olympic stage so like what was like the biggest thing you learned at the olympic stage and just competing there and like and playing against the best of the best in the world uh to be honest at the time i wasn't learning anything i was i was not able to take in that information <laughs> i was just solely fo that's a little bit of the old me was uh come had come out as far as focused and just yeah. being in the moment and and trying to do the best I could. And uh, it served me well at that time uh, because it really was the pressure of that kind of event uh, is, is very, very high. So, you know, that's probably one of the reasons why I played so well in, in the Olympics um, because I was so focused on just the moment. Yeah, and that's uh, but, that's the biggest thing too is yeah. staying in the moment, especially like as a goaltender, because if you get out, like you're you could call, you could have like some like pressure and all that come up, but if you stay in the moment, like it's a lot a lot easier to stay focused when you're in them in the present. Yeah, for sure. Like everybody has different personalities. Some people are going to be more chill and and need to be more chill. 
but for me at the time, uh, I was, was a little intense. So uh, I just tried to harness the focus and, and whatnot. But uh, it's definitely a harder way to sustain that kind of <laughs> intensity type uh, motivation. Yeah. But uh, in the short tournaments like that, it it works, and that's kind of how I did it back then. It's a lot better to have more of a stable mentality, and and uh, you have a more stable game as well. But in the short tournaments, and I was really good at that. Uh, as far as when I played well and was on, like I was like on another planet because yeah. I was just so in the zone and so into it. And when once I got in a role, it was I was really good at that. But it's hard to maintain that kind of uh, intensity. And then you yeah. have these pitfalls, right? Throughout it for, for seasons. But I got better at it over time. But uh, at that time, that's kind of how I rolled. And, uh, you know, I just uh, kind of was on a high. And that's why I don't remember a lot. And when people ask me these questions about the Olympics, a lot of it's a blur because I was just so in the moment, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's so that's so awesome because you're you're at that level and like you're just you don't like you're just focused like that's you're at that stage for a reason you just gotta focus and like make make sure that you're stopping the pucks and just taking everything you can and uh going because it, it is your con your your own country so it's like it's uh, it's a whole different feel to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of pressure but it's a lot of pride a lot of it's a really cool feeling like yeah. i i downplay the olympics a lot because there are so many things that above in in, in the importance list yeah. but it really is a cool experience i i, I i'm not going to deny that and there, there's so many levels of coolness about it you know like playing and being in the same village uh and eating breakfast lunch and dinner with you know all the all the the icons and whatnot because it's everybody is all in one spot. Yeah. You know it was the first year of the NHL guys, so it was like you know Gretzky and Brodeur and Wah and all those guys. So it was um it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's unreal. And then you uh then you wrap up your your pro career in Japan in two thousand five two thousand six, and then you actually back up as an as an e bug in the AHL for the Ontario rain in the 2016, 17 season. And your son was the start of that game. So like, how cool is that experience? Mm -hmm. And just getting to experience seeing your son start from, from the, from the bench's right. perspective. Uh, yeah, it was something really, I can't, <laughs> I couldn't comprehend at the time. Yeah. But looking back, it, it ended up being, it's kind of good that you brought that up because it, that is actually what was the highlight of my uh, hockey life, per se. Um, it was a real special moment because when you can combine something that you love with your family and someone you love, uh, it really was the ultimate uh, dream for me. Uh, nothing I could ever have imagined or planned um <laughs> could have happened and uh it was kind of crazy but it was a lot of fun it was a an honor and, and something that i'll always cherish for sure yeah absolutely so like what was it like taking warm-ups with him and just like being in the corner when he's taking shots then i'm mm -hmm. guessing you jumped in for a few shots as well yeah the whole thing was cool we were right from the the moment i flew, i drove back from la um i was in la at the time I was supposed to coach in LA because um, Billy Ranford was gone and I was helping them. So I was literally on pregame skate when uh, Jeff Zakoff got hurt and they made, I got off the ice and went up to the office and they told me that uh, they couldn't get anybody in time and Jonah's going to start. Jack Campbell's coming here to LA and Jonah doesn't have a backup. So we need you to drive back to Ontario and back up your son. And uh, <laughs> so there wasn't a whole lot of time to process the whole thing. Uh, but it was um, everything about it. Once I got there was so cool in the dressing room, dressing with him, watch, seeing our 
our stalls right next to each other and you know in in the pros the, you know everything's put up so my name tags on there uh i already had a jersey made and ready from before that because that's what i had all my gear uh made for me for these moments yeah. right and i practiced a lot with the team when when goalies um were had a heavy uh, workload um, I would give Budai or Campbell or Peterson or whoever a break. Uh, so I already had all the gear, had my jersey made for any moments like this, and that ended up being the first one. Um, <laughs> so it was pretty cool. And my name, my name, my jersey, Jonah's name, Jonah's jersey were there, sitting there. Uh, it was kind of neat. I tried to stay quiet and let him be like he would be in, in any dressing room. Yeah. But it was inside. I was like, this is like the coolest freaking thing ever. And then we go warm up and I'm watching him warm up and I'm part of it. And and uh, then on the bench, it's like I told this and I did a podcast just not long ago. And I said, it's cool enough. Like if your son plays his first American Hockey League game and you're like, get the call and you go buy the tickets and you go watch your son. Yeah. What a rush, right? That's so I get to be on the bench with my gear on as his dad, as his coach, and I'm right there watching this whole thing unfold in between the whistles, talking with them, and the whole thing was just a big rush. It was super cool. Yeah, that that's awesome. Like your obviously your best moment, like you said, in your in your entire in your life in your life and your career and like that's every mm -hmm. everyone's dream is as a dad is just uh be be there for their son especially like uh, especially like as an yeah. emergency backup or just even <laughs> on the bench like just any just a fan in the building like for your first start like that's that's all that that everyone like ever yeah. thinks of so it must it, yeah that would that must be really yeah. awesome of the experience that you experienced yeah yeah it was truly uh, a special moment <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So then throughout playing professionally, you have also been a goaltending coach professionally for 12 years, ranging from the BC to the WHL to the KHL, AHL, and then most notably the goaltending development coach for the Los Angeles Kings in the NHL. So like how cool is it seeing goalies you work with develop and be able to move on to bigger, bigger and better things when they get to progress and go up the levels? That's the big reason why I do it. That's the the big rush, uh, why I love the coaching aspect of things. I never knew I would love it, but uh, I ended up being something about giving and, and helping people uh, in general. It's a natural thing that just feels really good, man. And uh, I'm very grateful and uh, that I have this gift, it turns out, to be able to connect with people and help them overcome things and, and develop a, a good base, a good base to their path towards success yeah. and, and in life. And uh, I get such a rush from it. I still do. Um, right now, you know, I'm not coaching with a team and I've found a new focus for me, uh, doing my business, the goalie therapist and helping anybody that is having challenges with their life and uh, not just goaltending with everything and helping them build a stable uh, foundation yeah. in moving forward. And, and the whole thing uh, of coaching is just a, a cool vibe that uh, I'm really thankful that I made the move and took the chance to see if I was any good at it because it's uh, fulfilling when you can help other people, right? Yeah, exactly. So, like, from a like goalie coach perspective, like, what do you think are some of the biggest differences between what makes a great goalie and then an elite goalie? Right now, there's so many good goalies out there, like, yeah. because kids are learning at such a young age and being coached at such a young age. So they technically just the skill level is insane. But <laughs> having said that, there are a lot of goalies that haven't learned the art uh, of mastering themselves. Yeah. 
and that's a big component and uh, so that i would say it's a it's a tough question to answer but generally the difference between an elite goalie and a good goalie a, a really good goalie even is that ability to take all these arrows that are coming at you and deflect them does that make does that analogy yeah. make sense to you yeah uh and when you have these um big holes or pitfalls and and challenges in life in a period in the in in the game or a week or a month or whatever when you can't deal with these things it affects your game right yeah and the elites seem to everybody has crappy games crappy months it's the ones that can come out of that that turn into elites um, and they can r and ride these waves of ups and downs and go hey you know it is what it is man and then those are the ones that are really elite, uh, in my opinion. Because at the, at the NHL level, even the American League level, there's a lot of goalies that are as talented as some of the NHL goalies yeah. that don't quite quite make it to that next step because they haven't mastered that part yet. And uh, that's my uh, my version of what I think uh, separates the elite from the good. Yeah, those those that those are some great like great experiences that you experienced and just like great tips that you just said and just because like you do face a lot of like obstacles in a, in a season like you face a lot of ups and downs and then like mm -hmm. you're gonna have those weak points where your game goes downhill but if you just come back up and just master yourself like you said like those are that's what's gonna get you to remain focused because like once you remain focused like you can do anything and just like get yourself out of that ditch and just even if you, you're not playing well and you have to go back to the basics and just because right. that's all that it really comes down to is like the basics and the foundation of the position and just like do anything you can to get out of that ditch right for sure yeah so then like as a goal as a development coach for the kings like you obviously like help Jonathan Quick, help Peterson, Peter Budai, Jeff Zakoff, Jack Campbell, and all all those guys. So like, what what's it like seeing those guys develop, especially like where they are now? And just like, do you have any good stories about them? Oh, there's so many. There are so many great human beings, great people that I've met along the way, and there's too many. You know, if I said one, I'd want to say another <laughs> because I'd hate to leave anybody out because they're all yeah. so important to me uh, as friends as well. Um, but, yeah, there's just too many. Um, <laughs> I really would feel bad to name one person and not another, but yeah. they're all great people. I've, I've even met some great people that only did short, like, traded for someone and you know that i didn't get to work with for very long uh but ended up being great people and i was just man i'm just glad that i got to meet them for a short stint like guys like yeah. um ray emery uh rest his soul and yeah. uh he was with us for a bit and great guy that i had heard some other things about him that you know you just don't know right and he yeah. ended up being such a cool dude and then uh, Scott Wedgwood, uh, the list goes on. Like there's there's a bunch of guys that people don't even know I worked with, like for uh, shorter amounts and uh, just some real cool guys. And the hockey world uh, brings great guests and that's one of them. So I don't want to pick one <laughs> st story because I feel I'd be leaving out the other dudes and they're all real cool. Yeah, and, like, it's it's awesome how, like, small the goalie world is because, like, the goalie world is so small that you can connect with literally anyone and, like, everyone in the hockey world for the for a majority of the parts, like, really good people and, like, they're all there for each other and it's just a really, like, small, tight community. Oh, for sure. It's definitely – the goalie union is real. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. Absolutely. It's like, how important is it to have a good mindset as a goalie? And like, what are some of the key things to help develop a positive mindset, even when like things aren't going right? And like, I know we talked about like, you got to master yourself and all that, but is that, that also is a big key to being, having a good mindset. It's like having like that mastery of yourself as well. 
Yeah, well, it's it's key. Like I said yeah. to you, that's it's like what separates the elite from the good, and yeah. though dealing with all of those things is is a mindset issue for sure, and I that's the my main focus of what I do, especially now with the goalie therapist because I'm doing everything, all of the things that I do with guys like Jack Campbell and all these guys that I still help uh, uh, virtually and when I'm not around, off the ice stuff. Uh, so that's the biggest part of what I do. Um, to say it's kind of tough because to, to pinpoint it, because every individual is different on what they need to do to help master their mindset or yeah. whatever you want to yeah. call it. But I definitely start from within, uh, depending on who it is and what challenges they have in their lives, right? Like some people are really well-rounded people that have some other things that you need to kind of figure out what they might need to focus on. Like I, I'll use Caleb Peterson as an example. When he came to me, he was a very well-rounded dude and had a lot of things figured out. Yeah. Um, so there were other areas that maybe I could help him in, and I didn't want to hammer the same issues that I did with, say, Jack Campbell or or even a Peter Budai or whoever, right? Everybody's different. So it would all depend on what is going on in your life and how you've handled being a goaltender up to that point and he handled your career. I'll use the pros as an example, not kids. Uh, but like how you're dealing with your, your game right now with what your contract, your team, where you're at, you're number one, you're not a number one, all of these things you need, you, you need to ask these questions to these guys and, and figure out where it is they need the most help. And then you can kind of help build their mindset. Um, do I make sense so far? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I, Perfect I think sense. everybody is an in, individual puzzle that you got to kind of figure out and where you need to help them the most. But everybody does need to build a, a strong mindset. And, and I yeah. believe happiness with yourself and self-worth is the best start. Oh, yeah. I I don't care. Even if it's Jack Campbell or Cal Peterson, I, I think that, I approach it when I look at them as people first and where they are with themselves in their lives. And then I kind of bounce from there. And uh, once you've got that part mastered and you're really happy with you as a person, then you can kind of move forward. And then we work on other parts of your mind and, you know, little things like the game and stuff. But yeah. uh, I, my recommendation to everybody is first, uh, We'll work on being happy with yourself and where you're at, you know? Yeah, exactly. Those are, those are some great points and they're all hundred percent true. Cause if you just got to be happy with yourself and like master yourself, like we haven't taught in this entire episode and just have be in the right mindset. Cause then everything, everything else is going to follow and just, and then once you get that all down, like being a student of the game and just learning from like the different resources that we all have now with YouTube Instagram, like social media and just everything like goalie, like goalie coaches and just learning from your partners, whatever, just like you learn so much that you could just, you could learn from them and then try to emulate, emulate it into your own game. Yeah, for sure. And one of the biggest things that I would recommend people, and this isn't a plug for my business because <laughs> you can talk to anybody and not just me, yeah. but my advice is don't be afraid to talk to people, find someone that you trust. And that's why I offer what I offer. Yeah. But if it's not me, find someone else that, uh, that you can share these important things in your life that you need to get off your chest and help work things out or whatever. But when you internalize things, it's hard to move forward to the next step. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, us as hockey players, I know this all too well. We, you know, have a, a tough outer shell and you kind of just robotic and do your biz and don't show weakness, right? Yeah. 
but uh, the ability to, to have someone to talk to. And that's kind of one of my abilities and w one of my reasons for the success is I'm a good listener and um, I'm there for them. And th that's a lot of that connection that you build and it makes me teaching the hockey stuff easier, right? Yeah. But uh, that's my biggest advice to, to some of the young guys is – uh, have someone that you can really trust and bounce bounce stuff off of. That's kind of the whole purpose of the goalie therapist, and and I, I recommend people finding someone, you know, that they can trust and 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 be uh, uh, lean to, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I I hundred percent agree with you there because I I used to keep things in, but like ever since like you get to the college level and the and you just want to keep moving on, like that's when you realize you gotta open up to some people and like especially like your trusted friends like family and just talk about some of the things and like it gets uh, it gets you so gets you in a better place as well as just being able to open up and just take a lot off your shoulders yeah for sure yeah awesome. yeah so i have i have one more question for you before we wrap things up here so uh, you also have your own podcast called Motley thoughts with dusty dusty emo so like what what was like the origins behind it like how much fun is it to run your own podcast well it was awesome the whole point of it was literally therapeutical for me uh, because it was based around i wanted to do a, a podcast to show the the real side of me i wanted to talk to musicians because i'm a, a musician a guitarist i, I yeah. love harleys and motorcycles and i'm a bit of an anomaly a bit different <laughs> in that way and i wanted to talk to anybody and everything i yeah. wanted to be just what i wanted to enjoy talking about and and just have real good cool conversations so that was the whole point of it the start of it and uh i i would have hockey people on but it would be my buddies and we'd talk about whatever path the conversation took it went down. It wasn't going to be me and an interviewer because that's not what I am. Yeah. And it was really cool. It was, it was starting to go. And then um, uh, what happened with me in, in, in um, Toronto and, and, and whatnot kind of, I had to take a, a bit of a silence back seat for a while and, and get my life in order uh so i if people notice and wonder why motley thoughts isn't hasn't been running since june of last year it's because of, i've been dealing with uh, you know trying to figure out my life and and whatnot but i've actually uh committed to i'm gonna get it started up again and uh because i really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun yeah. man it was really cool and it, it brought out an artistic uh side of me that has always been there because i love music and art and i got to create you know what i mean you're yeah. doing all the creation yourself uh, i had no production team so i was figuring all that out and i you know write my own music that i got to put on there and for the intro and outro so that was a real cool thing so i'm gonna get her started up again and uh I've got a few people lined up that uh, I'm pretty excited about, so it'll be cool. I think I'm going to have Kelly Rudy on and and uh, and get a few more people and get her going again. Yeah, that that's unreal. I can't can't wait to listen to listen to those episodes again and just it's it's a lot of fun creating your own your own content and podcast and just being able to to listen to other guys that have played at a at a professional college like level, whatever, and just like see how where they got to work or how they got to where they are and just learn from, learn from them and like help your, help your viewers learn and get better as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a cool thing. Right. It's so weird how podcasts have taken on this whole new, <laughs> whole new uh, vibe that, you know, it's, it's everywhere. Everyone wants to have, and I think it's good. It's healthy talking, getting out there, putting yourself out there. Even if you, only get a few listeners or followers it's good to speak and talk and 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 not be afraid you know i think the fact that you're able to do it and uh regardless of the followers uh helps people you know it helps people get out of their shell right 
and i i think it's a cool thing podcast it's really neat yeah absolutely and like i've always been like a a shy a shy guy uh when i was younger but like this has brought out like a lot then that probably a five years ago i wouldn't have said I'd ever do but i'm i'm like 200 episodes in now and i don't plan on stopping anytime soon i'm helping helping other people helping myself get better it's all that's all that really matters yeah yeah 100 percent. i think that's awesome i think that's awesome i actually when you emailed me uh you know i i checked out your your um your podcast because you know i didn't know who you were and uh but just so you know, I said yes before even knowing. I didn't. I, I I think it's cool people reach out. But anyways, I looked and I couldn't believe how many episodes you had. I was like, holy smokes, that's a lot of interviewing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of fun though. You learn you learn a lot and like you connect with guys you never would have thought you you would connect with. So it's it's an awesome experience. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. That's kudos to you. Hey, thank you, but uh, Dusty, this has been a lot of fun. I hope you, I hope you had a great time. I really appreciate your you coming on the show and taking the time to come out and talk with me and talk some hockey, talk your career, and talk some podcasts as well. Yeah, no, I I appreciate you having me on and uh, and good luck to you, man. And keep keep doing the podcast and uh, and uh, and I good luck with your uh, your coaching too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank thank you and. It's going to be going to be a lot of fun. It's all about the journey and not the destination. Well said, my friend. Well said.